So you made a big piano recording session, captured all of the piano keys, and now you want to create samples from that and use them in the sampler module. M Sound Factory has some really cool utilities that will do all of the heavy lifting for you. I have the actual recordings for Monastery Grand here. It was exported from my door to several files, one file per microphone. And there are a few of them to make sure everything fits in my computer's memory. The number in the beginning defines the MIDI key. The first thing I will use is the sample cutter. It first lets me select audio files to load. So let me load the 48, all of them. Next number is 54, so I will be processing six piano keys. The tool loads all of the files and displays it here. Note again that these audio files need to fit in the memory. There are many color-coded sections which are the samples to be exported. From a brief look at the waveform, it actually looks like we are pretty much done, since every obvious peak marking a new note seems to start a new colored section. What you may need to adjust is the attack and release right inside the graph view. Attack should be right below the lowest peak of each waveform and release should be right above the highest valley. When you change something, press recalculate in the bottom. There are more settings in the detection settings panel, but hopefully you'll never need them. In the left top corner of the sample view, there's a little text saying 60 samples. So we have six keys, that means 10 samples per key, which is correct because it was captured with five layers per key and two altering samples. So the samples were detected correctly and we are done, nearly. Now I need to select the output path where the samples will be exported to. Naturally, I'll put them inside my samples folder. Let's make it C, samples, awesome company. Awesome piano samples. Next, the name format. Place the mouse over it and press F1 or Control plus H. There's a lot of tags to choose from, including key, velocity, frequency. By default, the cutter automatically detects pitch, velocity, and other properties, but if the detection wouldn't work as expected, you may be in trouble, and lots of piano keys can fail indeed, especially the lowest and highest ones. So I'm going to use the manual sequence panel. Sounds scientific, but it only tells the engine that I know in which order the notes were pressed. Now, I know we started from MIDI key 48. Sampled all keys, so the next key is plus one indeed. We created five layers. And two altering hits. and I'm going to select the default name format for manual sequence. Just some nice naming convention, which just works and will make the resulting samples easy to import. Press the export samples button and let it do the magic. Let's check the samples. There are 240 of them, neatly organized. If you look at the name of any file, it's pretty clear what sample it is. Can you imagine doing that manually? I don't. And it was nearly instant using the sample cutter. Also notice the file with extension state in the folder with tracks. It contains the sample limits. So if I change my mind later about the naming, for example, I can just open the cutter again and it will produce the exact same results as before. Now let's copy the name format. Close the cutter and import the samples, say mic A. Set both pitch detection and velocity detection to from file name. 
the file format is already there. If not, you can just copy it from the cutter. Press OK. All done. Sampler loads all the samples and imports them properly. There are just a few keys, but that's enough for demonstration. I can do that with all of the mics, but that would be a bit of a boring tutorial. We're not finished yet though. There are two more handy features in the sampler. The cutter intentionally left more space in the beginning of the sample than needed. Now, if I play, it will feel a bit laggy, like there was some latency. Click menu again and select automatic sample start. A small window appears, and now the best thing to do is to just play and change the parameters, namely start level, until it feels right. Every time I change the parameter, the start locator is recalculated in all samples. Let me zoom in so you can see that. Feels right. Close. That's all. Don't forget to use presets to save all your hard work. And one more handy feature. Menu, Automatic Velocity Layers. Right now, the layers are equally spaced in each key. While it would be awesome if the piano player would be able to actually do that, I don't think even a robot could. So this tool adjusts the velocity layers according to the actual audio. The tool contains several parameters which control how much of each of these features affect the velocity. By default, equal distribution is set to 50% and maximum RMS 10 milliseconds to 100%. That means all other features are ignored. This means that the velocity layers are generated from maximum RMS level in each sample and equal distribution, which is what we had originally. Same size for each layer and the RMS has twice the impact. Every time I move any of the parameters, the velocity layers are recalculated. So I can, again, just play dynamically and play with the parameters until it feels right. And in just a few minutes, I've cut recordings into hundreds of samples, imported them, and made playing them feel right. How about that?